Hello, this is Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter and Bernina Ambassador. This is the Essential Ruler Quilting Challenge. We are in week four and we are using the squiggle ruler from the Bernina Essentials Ruler Kit. Let's look at another squiggle design. I call it pearls. This is the design that I call pearls and you might have seen the instructions. Hopefully you did. If you're just joining the challenge, you can find instructions on how to mark your quilt sandwich. We are always marking our quilt sandwich with reference lines that we then use with the reference lines on the ruler to create beautiful quilting designs. And this is no different. And we always are stitching in steps. It makes it manageable and easy to do. We are stitching one pass of the design. Then we stitch a second pass. We stitch on the left, then we stitch on the right or vice versa. And we're using this side of the ruler. When we have the reference lines, we always want to start for a design like this, whether we're shoot, stitching on the left or the right, always start in the same spot. We bring the ruler in and we place the edge of the ruler along the edge of the reference line we marked on our quilt sandwich. When we start, we always want to start on a spot on the ruler that has a reference line. You don't want to start somewhere in the middle, meaning where there's no reference line, in between reference lines. You want to start where there's a reference line on the ruler because it's easy to start and stop on a reference line, especially if you have to walk away for a moment, you know that you have started or stopped on a reference line. I like to start in an easy location. And for a curve ruler, an easy location is in the valley rather than the peak. But I'm going to show you both. So for this design, I started in the valley and I stitched all the way down and I place the ruler on the left-hand side of the foot. When you want to stitch the second part of the design, you can rotate the ruler to the other side, the other reference line, and do exactly the same thing. We want to start in the valley, place the ruler edges along the reference line you marked on your quilt sandwich. There's something else you might notice when you do that. When the ruler is in the right place, notice how this peak just about touches or kisses the previous line of stitching. I'll show you the same thing over here. When you're stitching it on the right-hand side, meaning the ruler's on the right-hand side of the ruler foot, and it's positioned correctly, these peaks are going to touch right here, just like that. And when they do, that's when you get this shape, this overlap. You want to double check that when you're placing the ruler. That's how you stitch pearls. Let's take a look on the machine and I'll walk you through it as well. So here, again, I'm starting in the valley. I'm lining it up with a horizontal line so I consistently start at the right spot. So I have a horizontal line at the top. That could be our seam allowance in a real quilt. When we don't have seams, you can mark a line to represent a seam. So I'm starting on that line with the valley position on the ruler, which has a reference line. Starting there, and I've lined up the edge of the ruler on each of those curves. Those valley curves are lined up on the reference line I marked on the quilt sandwich. Now I'm just going to stitch from the top to the bottom. I always bring my bobbin thread up to the top, 
pull on both threads to minimize the slack in the thread to reduce that. Stitch a couple of stitches in place and then I'm off stitching. And you're going to do that on the left side of the ruler foot and on the right side of the ruler foot. It's just a repeat. You're just changing the position of the ruler. And that's good when you're quilting a big project and you want to stitch the same thing, but on a different side of the ruler foot. So you don't have to change the position of the quilt or you might want to change the position of the quilt and always stitch on one side. That's up to you what works. But here I want to show you how I'm stitching with the ruler now on the right side. I've done it on the left and I just did it on the right. You've seen the first line of stitching. Now you're seeing the second. See how those peaks are kissing, the peaks on the ruler are kissing the peaks of the stitched curvy design. That's going to give us that beautiful crossover in this pearl design. And remember, I'm starting in the valley, same position all the time for this design. If you start in a different location and shift the ruler, it's going to be a different design. Now, normally I wouldn't stitch like this. I did that so that you could have a good view of the stitching. I didn't want my hands in the way. And that's how easy it is to stitch pearls. You want to figure out which way works best for you. Do you like to stitch always on the left or the right? Do you like to shift? Notice how I've changed the ruler position. Remember I said I like to start in the valley rather than the peak? That peak is such a small area, but I wanna show you that it can be done so I started the stitching at the top with it on the peak instead of the valley. I'm still lining up the ruler exactly the same way. Reference line on the quilt sandwich. The edge of the ruler is on that reference line. I've started at that top horizontal reference line. I just shifted the ruler up so that I can stitch beginning on a peak instead of a valley. I, I will still get the same result. I've just shifted the position of the design. I've shifted it up just a little bit. And I'll show you on the sandwich when I go back to the overhead camera what that looks like when you shift one column and you shift the next column, how that can give an interesting and different look. Again, I normally don't stitch like that. I did that for camera view mainly so that you could see what I was doing. That's how easy it is to stitch pearls. And here's what it looks like when you're done. When you are done stitching, I suggest you go from the small sandwich to a larger sandwich. I've said this for multiple designs throughout the challenge. You want to see how it looks over a larger area of a quilt. Now, I promised you to show you the layout difference. Here, each column was started exactly the same way from the top. So from the seam, I would call that the top or the reference line that I drew at the top of the quilt sandwich, I started the same. Whether I started with the peak and started stitching or I started with the valley and started stitching, they're all lined up, but you can alternate them and shift. So let's see what that looks like. So these two were started exactly the same way. See, these are lining up. This is lined up. This is lined up. But this one is different. Notice how you have a larger circle here and a smaller circle here. That's because I started them differently. This one started probably on the valley and this one started on the peak. But you will get this. And then when you bring them closer together, you can have a different look 
in the design. When you space things differently, you get a different pattern. You get a secondary pattern. Look at this pattern here and here. See how it's going like this, like a wave? Now look at the pattern here. It's a mirror. These two are mirrored rather than a wave, a mirror image of each other. Mirror image here, here it's a wave. I hope these tips help you to see how you can do your own design work with rulers. I'm so glad I had this chance to share with you a pearl design that on the surface is relatively easier to stitch than some of the other designs, but it still offers some design techniques that you can transfer to other rulers that you have in your ruler library, your acrylic ruler library. Let's look at another squiggle design. 